We'll go ahead and get kicked off right at the top of the hour. Uh, my name is John Beck. I'm the executive director and principal investigator for the National Center for Autonomous Technologies. Uh, today's webinar presentation is really an extension of the distance delivery modalities work group that we've had coming together to look at the transition in delivery methods for educational programming, the traditional classroom, STEM camps, student competitions, and educator workshops, um, both as a result of the trends we've seen over the last couple of years that were really accelerated with the COVID-19 impact in the last couple of months. And we've had a great team coming together to really explore all kinds of different options. Uh, we've had four webinars up to this point, one which was a high level overview, looking at all things that, that we could consider as we look at those transitions to meet student needs um, where they're at. Uh, one hosted by Mark Gill with the St. Cloud State Visualization Lab that was around VR for social engagement and those types of environments. Another by uh, Kapil Matithal with Clemson University and the Center for Auto Automotive and Aviation Virtual E-Schools, uh, looking at digital learning tools. And today we have Andrew Dolan, who is a mechatronics instructor at the host institution for NCAT, which is Northland Community and Technical College, located in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. And Andrew's been focusing on uh, video production kits and really looking at how to uh, provide faculty with resources to be able to have user-friendly tools for video production, whether that's from their lab environments, if they've got access to the campus or their um, home environments, if they're recording content and, and trying to update curriculum with these enhanced resources. So we'll be talking specifically about the hardware tools to make that uh, possible, not looking at uh, professional production products, but really user-friendly products to give faculty the tools and resources they need to, to be able to develop that content and um, not worry so much about the post-processing uh, production of that. And then we've also got our partners with uh, the Marine Advanced Technology Education Center out of Monterey Peninsula. Uh, Matthew Gardner, and also one of their long-term partners from Streamworks, Dennis Courtney. We're going to talk about their recent experiences with delivering STEM camps and educator workshops and implementing some of the tools and hardware that Andrew's going to be talking about. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass it right over to Andrew Dolan, and you can take it away. So again, thanks for the introduction. And uh, one of the things I would like the participants that are watching to do is to make my face bigger on your screen. You can do this by finding my name and then clicking on the dot, dot, dots, and then you should be able to pin me onto the screen. That's gonna make my image much larger, and I think you can adjust that window and improve it. Um, and I ask you to do this because we're gonna be using my video feed to be able to showcase some of the different features of this video capture um, package that we've put together. So like John had illuminated before, uh, the intention here is not for us to be producing professional quality videos. The uh, intent of this whole project is to be able to produce content and to be able to do it rapidly without the need to edit and splice a lot of different video footages together after the fact. So I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the hardware that we're putting together. And when we first were approached about this project, um, I was excited because uh, with Northland College, one of the things I get to do is an awful lot of STEM outreach activities. And it's kind of heartbreaking to not have the summer camps and to be in limbo about the student competitions. So I do a lot of stuff with uh, the VEX Robotics outreach. And it's been, you know, like I said, disheartening to not be able to do those in our typical face-to-face -face manner. So now we're looking for alternative methods that we can be able to produce content and still keep the community going during this uh, pandemic time. So um, I guess I'll start with an overview of the entire system here. And I'll start by sharing some things out. 
So this is an overall picture of the package we've put together. And there are so many different options available for people that want to produce video content. Um, this is not, I'm not uh, saying this is the best system you could possibly have, but I think it's a, a really good solution for us to start with. So you guys can see it's got a uh, four video inputs. And so what we have is uh, three cameras and I'll go through a little, a little bit about the specs on the cameras in a, in a bit and then one laptop. So the laptop is connected to this device as well. In the center, you guys can see what's called the ATEM Mini. And this is really the magical box that makes things happen with this video system. The ATEM Mini is a video switching device. It allows one person to operate the entire setup here um, simply by clicking buttons and they can toggle between the different camera feeds or your computer screen feed. Um, so from one person, they're able to control the entire setup and uh, the ATEM Mini is connected to another device called a Video Assist. And I'm gonna give you guys a physical tour of all this equipment set up after we get through this diagram the to show you how we've got it set up in the lab. Is now joining. So, this device, like I said, is the switching that allows us to select which camera feed we would like to choose. It also allows you to select and manipulate the audio signals. So we can have uh, in this setup here with three cameras and one external microphone, there are four microphones in this proximity to me. So we can choose to have a fixed microphone and then uh, if we have some reason that we need to have the camera a distance away, maybe we want to use the camera's internal microphone. And so this switching device also controls your audio inputs. And you can bring them up and down with this uh, ATEM mini switching device. In addition, it will do some pretty neat effects as far as uh, picture in picture and um, transitions from one image to the next. You can kind of alter and change those up a bit. Um, the output of this, as we put together in this system, feeds into a device that's called a video assist. And this device has a little SD card in it. And very simply, we can uh, just put the SD card in and hit the record button on the touch screen of the video assist. And it's going to be recording live. So um, it also, in that video assist, provides a small screen so you can actually see what's happening live inside of the, uh, the whole production. So you know, you know, if you're trying to talk about something on your overhead camera, you'll be able to make sure, oh, I'm actually showing the overhead camera in my little video assist. That little monitor is so useful in helping understand like what's actually being recorded at the time. And it's also got some um, audio volume bars that go across there. So you can kind of watch and make sure that you're getting a good strength audio signal. And if you're not, you can easily adjust it up and down. Um, the other part of this system is going to be uh, a webcam output. And that's what makes this really slick. The ATEM Mini has a USB connection. So all of these four separate video and audio sources, um, they're going to feed out of the ATEM Mini into a laptop, and it's going to look like a simple USB camera. So if you're live streaming something, that's one way to do this, is to connect the USB directly to another computer, and you can be live streaming um, and it's pretty easy. In fact, that's what I'm using now as my camera for this Teams meeting. So I can toggle between the different feeds here. And I guess at this point, Chelsea, can you stop uh, sharing the screen? And I'll give a tour of the system that we have set up here. All right, so again, pin my image so that it shows up a little bit bigger for you guys to see some of the details. But um, as he talked about, it has the four separate camera feeds. We've got the talking head. And just by pressing a push button here, I can toggle between the talking head and my overhead document camera. That's what these main buttons here are, your four separate inputs. 
The third one is going to be my computer. So I've got this set up as a duplicate display. So you've got now a, a double Zoom image or a double um, Teams image that's coming. And then the fourth image that I have or input to this, um, I have a camera that's just loose that I can uh, showcase things around the lab. So I think I'll just continue with that here and try to give you guys an overhead um, tour of all the dis different equipment. So there is the ATEM Mini with all of its uh, HDMI inputs that are feeding into the various cameras on the system. Um, that has an HDMI output that connects over here to a video assist. So I've got this mounted on a little tripod and this is my video assist. If I wanted to do a recording, I would insert an SD card over here and then simply hit the record button. And now it's recording live and away we go. So from an instructional standpoint, this is awesome to be able to see what is my live feed that's happening here. And of course, if I toggle it over, it's not going to quite work, but um, you can see the audio bars there as well. It actually looks like I'm talking a little bit too loud. I'm starting to see a little bit of red in the volume meters. So if I turn that um, down, I have uh, buttons all right on the A10 Mini to be able to turn that down a bit so I'm not getting those red bars. So that's a great feedback device. As you're talking, as you're recording, you can see what you're doing and you can see what your audio levels are doing live. So I'm going to stop this because we're recording it on Teams and there's no point in doubling up on it. Um, so that's kind of nice for me to be able to look at from my perspective straight out. I've got the talking head camera that's mounted right in front of me and we'll take a look at some of the other things that I've got set up. Um, this is the Blue Yeti microphone and as I walk around here, I may lose some of my volume controls because that uh, Blue Yeti is uh, wanting me to talk directly straight into it. So one of the things I can do is to change my audio input. Again, if you had a different setup, maybe you would want the camera feed from camera four to turn on the audio and I can turn off the audio from the Blue Yeti. So now the camera feed, and I can see it's really spiking in my video assist. As I'm walking around, I'm actually using the microphone. I just switched between microphones. Um, so now it's into the camcorder microphone. Um, the other parts of the setup that we have here is an overhead camera, and this is a super flexible setup. So this is what I'm using as my document camera, and it's got a ball and socket joint there such that I can position it at any angle. And uh, that's a pretty neat boom pole that can slide in and out on this kind of pretty beefy tripod. So that's a, a great feature, not only for overhead document camera purposes, but it can be repositioned for, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to capture. Um, I also have some lights, uh, and as I was ex experimenting with this, I didn't like the light setup. I thought it would be better if the lights were turned off, especially um, in this configuration. So uh, I do have a background that's hanging up over here, as you guys can see, and I guess that's that's the main tour behind everything. So we'll switch back. All right. Um, cable management is interesting with this. Um, all of the devices, all the input devices we're using are hardwired into the Mini ATEM. So having a 15 foot HDMI cable that one can wander around a little bit with is a benefit. It is not a wireless system. Uh, they do make some systems that are wireless, but uh, one of the features with that is I don't want to put a lot of stress on these cables. So just a tip to zip tie things up a little bit such that there's some strain relief on the cables and it's not going to uh, stress that HDMI joint, uh, that connection there and uh, fatigue it over time. Okay, uh, and I can pause here if there are any questions at this point.
Okay. So all of the cameras that are set up here are operating in standby mode. Each camera has an HDMI cord that's connected to the ATEM Mini. And because they're operating in standby mode, we have to change a couple of camera settings to make sure that the cameras don't automatically power down because they, they're in standby mode. There are no SD cards in the cameras. Um, I'm not pressing any buttons on the cameras to make them record. They're simply feeding from their lens out to an HDMI into this HDMI switching device. So we want to make sure that your cameras are producing what's called clean HDMI. And as a in your viewfinder for a camera, I'll switch one more thing here. All right, here's a typical camera viewfinder. And you can see um, some of the on-screen displays that are showing different menus and whatnot kind of around the edges of the image. That is not clean HDMI. And some cameras have this capability and some don't. So uh, when we first started this project, I grabbed all the cameras that we had laying around my house and some from the college and started experimenting. And a lot of them did not have that ability to turn off the on-screen displays. So that's one thing if uh, you decide to go with other cameras that you might have laying about, um, find ones that produce an, a clean HDMI signal that's just the image and none of this peripheral stuff that uh, talks about like date and time and, and things like that. You don't wanna have that showing up on your screen. The other things you wanna watch out for is that your cameras don't automatically power down. And uh, so disable some of the automatic power down options. Uh, you'll also wanna check that it doesn't just go into demo mode. Some of these cameras, when they're just sitting idle in standby mode, they'll go into this demo mode and show you all the cool features that the camera can do. Well, that wouldn't be good if I needed to snap over to an overhead and all of a sudden I'm getting this demo mode. So a couple of things to be mindful about on your cameras. Um, I'm pretty happy with the different cameras that we've put together in this package. And for your reference, at the end of this presentation, um, I have a PowerPoint that's got all the different resources and some of the options and setup. And it also includes a hyperlink to the B&H Audio website where I've put together a wish list and all of the different hardware pieces that are being demonstrated today are available in that wish list. So you just click on that link and then if you feel like it, you can add them to your cart. Um, the unfortunate thing is that right now, all of this stuff is very popular. So we are not alone in trying to uh, make our own video content. Uh, there are all kinds of other people. And so this equipment can be a little bit hard to get and some of the lead times are longer than we would like. So if you're him and hawing about it, um, specifically the Mini, ATEM Mini, is a hot item and hard to get. So um, I would advise you if you if you want that to order it today, get you, get in the queue. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the neat features that are on the ATEM that allow us to uh, transition from one screen to the next. So it has a, uh, a bunch of features over here and one of them is a picture-in-picture -picture option. Now, the picture-in-picture, -picture, the talking head, has to be connected to your HDMI input number one, so that when you're in another screen and demonstrating something, I can click on, and there's my picture-in-picture um, -picture mode that's set up over there, and we can mo move that picture-in-picture -picture to the four separate corners of our platform here our output image. So that's a, a neat deal and it will follow you around. I think you have to enable the picture in picture for each one of them. All right. Uh, some other options that we have would be the, uh, the transitions from one screen to another screen. 
So there's about six different options here for what they call uh, DVE, digital video effects, that allow you to change the transition um, if you want to have it come from a, a swipe across, and I'll demonstrate one of these. There it's swiping across. And you can also change the transition times. So you have some default settings here of half second, one second, one and a half seconds, and two seconds. So you can transition from one to the other with these different transition effects. And I'm just kind of experimenting with some of them right now. So sliding off compressing this one's called mix it just kind of blends and fades from one to the other and then dip all right so that's all built right into the device and uh, very very cool very intuitive to use didn't take too much practice to be able to just manipulate around and showcase these different features um, it also has a button here that says FTB, which stands for fade to black. So we can hit that button, everything goes away nicely, and perhaps that's where you start your video. You kind of get everything set up and hit the record button over here, and then deselect your fade to black option, and you're up and running. You can start recording at that point. So that's nice if you have um, transitionary things to do. Um, some other features would be uh, still images. There's a button right here that, that says still. And we can see that by pressing the still button, it uh, would bring up an image. And to get these still images put in there, I think you have options up to 20 different still images that you can put into this device. Um, you need to download and install a separate piece of software, and that's the uh, the Blackmagic Mini ATEM um, software control panel. So that's got some neat features. Um, one thing, this is a, a a bug, a glitch in in the system here, and it has to do with Microsoft Teams. It frustrated me. Uh, so get this, Microsoft Teams in their infinite wisdom decided, we're going to automatically flip the image. So when I have a still image up here, I had to create a backwards still image to make this work with Microsoft Teams. So be careful if you're using this device for Microsoft Teams, any text that you show, even text from overhead, is going to be backwards. And to, to, to date, there is no fix for that that I'm aware of. It works with Zoom, so if you're using Zoom, you have an option to flip your camera image horizontally, and then you're in good shape, everything works. But even when I go to my screen over here, um, you guys can see, is that showing up backwards? No? Well, it was showing up backwards for a bunch of us earlier, so at any rate, um, something to be mindful of. Um, there are, uh, again, just a pile of options and, and bells and whistles once you get into this, and we don't have to use all of them. Uh, I like the very simple setup that we have here that one instructor could quite easily showcase something to an audience and be able to hit the record button on the video assist, um, go through, present information from your computer, from your overhead document camera, from a mobile camera, from your talking head camera. And you're able to toggle between these things with relative ease. So um, that's great. Uh, and, and there are options for either recording it directly to the SD card, makes that uh, a pretty simple solution for an instructor that maybe isn't uh, uh, want doesn't want to get into all the tech savvy stuff that's happening here and they can just produce it on the SD card and then share it out to whomever their audience is but it also has that great option of being able to connect it and do live streaming directly from the USB cable into a computer or something I, I haven't talked about much uh, is the mini the mini ATEM does have an ethernet connection 
And once you have all your live stream key set up, you can enter that into the mini ATEM and live stream directly from the mini ATEM to the internet. So that's a great feature. Um, again, not necessary. I, I like that this can be a simple standalone solution for recording lectures, for recording whatever demonstrations. Um, and it's got some higher end features to it as well. Um, <clears throat> one of the higher end features I was experimenting with is uh, the chroma key. So green screen kinds of things. Um, if I were to click on this, uh, let's see. There we go. So this is a green screen <clears throat> that I have set up. And all that I've created here is a PowerPoint presentation. And I Googled the green screen color, um, an image of the green screen, and just blew that up as my background. <clears throat> So this green screen with the chroma key options, <clears throat> I can just click on the green screen chroma key. And when I hit that, then I've got logos that can appear in the you know, upper and lower parts of the screen. And since this is just a PowerPoint over here, again, as an instructor, if uh, these things need to change, like the logos or the text that streams across the bottom, if that needs to change, I can just hit next on the PowerPoint. And uh, all it is is a green screen over here with the, uh, the text at the bottom. So the software is gonna filter out all of the uh, green stuff. And once you hit that uh, green screen key, there you go. And again, I'm just kind of toggling back and forth with the PowerPoint to be able to get these different elements to show up on the mini ATEM. Was so, the um, key, key on the ATEM mini, or are you doing that from like your laptop? So the green screen, the green screen key is on the mini, and it's in the upper right-hand corner. So. Right over here, it's got the uh, the green screen <laughs> the green screen key on and off buttons up here, right? So that's pretty neat to be able to just toggle that on and off and get the different logos to show up. So um, lots and lots of bells and whistles, uh, but it you don't have to use all of them. Um, you can simply connect the system up. It can be standalone and you'll be able to create those demonstration and instructional videos uh, with relative ease. And it's one person that's operating all of this stuff with just uh, a few push buttons. So um, I was given about a half an hour's time to go through this and um, we're going to transition next to, uh, I think it's Dennis has got some great stuff, some videos that they've put together using um, this kind of equipment. And um, then I think afterwards we're going to open it up for some questions and answers. But are there any um, questions at this time before we uh, lose track of it and move forward here? Andrew, this is Vince. Um have you tried it with a DSLR camera as one of your input cameras, like an icon or something like that? So my wife has a Canon 5D and that particular model she owns did not have the clean HDMI. So it still had those on screen displays of like the ISO and I couldn't get rid of them. I couldn't turn them off. So be mindful of that. Um, certainly there are DSLR cameras that would work but just try to find ones that have that clean HDMI output. Hey, Andrew, this is Jill. Probably a pretty simple question. Uh, how are you feeding all this into Microsoft Teams? Is that the USB out on the um, A10 Mini? Yep, that's correct. So um, I've got a USB webcam out that's feeding into my laptop that's uh, pulled up with Microsoft Teams. And then 
um, in Microsoft Teams, all I have to do is change my camera setting. So it's pretty darn simple that this all just feeds directly into um, a laptop and then you can use various media then because it again the beauty part is that it just looks like a webcam so you can use zoom and skype and uh, if you're live streaming you could have this hooked up to you know whatever your live streaming platform is facebook or twitch or whatever it is yeah Thanks, and I realize um, I have ours here. It's the A10 Mini Pro, and I realize we've got some additional features, which we will have to learn about. <laughs> yeah, lots of bells and whistles, but again, you don't have to use them all. Right. Uh, it's pretty neat. Once it's all set up, uh, it's fairly intuitive to be able to rapidly switch your content around, see what you're producing, and uh, I think it's going to be an incredible asset for any instructors that need to be able to produce content. Well, with that, I think uh, we should introduce our, our next group who's got some great videos to show us. That sounds good. So we'll go ahead and transition. Uh, Chelsea, if you want to pull up those slides, um, we'll get those up on the screen. Thank you, Andrew, for that overview of the equipment. I know there's probably going to be more questions going through there and, and great content. I think the best part is how user friendly that that system seems. I know we had a pretty long lead time as far as those components like you were talking about actually getting that in. So you haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it, but I think it's pretty apparent that the setup that you've selected is really a user-friendly setup and that's uh, the key goal for faculty to have a kit that's easy to use to go through and capture that content so thank you very much for that run through on that I'm sure there'll be more to follow there um, at this point we can go ahead and transition over to i believe matt gardner is gonna start this one yes. and really talking yep. about the uh application of this equipment for the recent STEM camps and educator workshops that you've hosted. Thank you, Jonathan. And I do have a real quick question. Can people see my video? I noticed that when I was looking at Andrew's team thing, I was my video wasn't on. So can people, I know we're looking at the, the presentation, but can people see my video? I have not seen it. I'm just wondering if it's, I have a second camera plugged in and I'm wondering if that's it. I mean, it's not important that you see me. Um, and if anyone is is seeing my video, I will apologize for the lighting. And Kat got us some great lights. And of course, they're at home in my studio and so here and the lighting in my office is horrible. Um, but anyway, um, as I said, I'm going to talk about um, our professional development workshop we ran last week. And how MATE has traditionally offered professional development is in person. Content is delivered by instructors who can use can who use a Canvas online course management system as a complement to in-person delivery. For example, in the past, participants would follow along on their laptops or tablets as the instructor delivers a PowerPoint presentation viewable on the screen or monitor behind them. And of course, during build sessions. Uh, the instructors could walk around the room and monitor progress and identify where help was needed. Of course, when COVID struck, uh, we at eight, we weighed our options and decided that we needed to consider moving to an online format. And of course, if the pandemic abated in late spring, we could always quickly revert back to the usual in-person format. It's cutting out right now. I can't actually hear you if you're still on the line. Hey guys, uh, this is Dennis Courtney. If Matt is uh, having some difficulties, uh, uh, I can pipe in uh, our little part uh, with uh, the NCAT and the MATE experiment, if that's okay. So, yeah, hear? sounds good, Dennis. Just to, uh, in case Matt can still hear us right now, in the yeah. chat screen, if you uh, scroll, you'll see the video camera microphone and that there's one for a chat box conversation and in there you'll see the updated information for the call-in just in case matt's uh trying to get back on the line but i think that'd be good if you want to 
transition um, to what you're going to talk about, and we'll look for Matt yeah, to come well, back on the line. Yeah, and unfortunately, because of my signal, I called in via telephone, so I'm telephonic. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm Dennis Courtney with Streamworks. And so back when all of this started in March, we got together with some school officials and we said, you know what, we've had all these camps scheduled uh, primarily in the month of June and July, and that's where we really uh, make our mark. You know, we're year round, but our, our, the bulk of our activities are uh, in person STEM camps during the months of June and July. We immediately had to pivot to, uh, you know, think about what could we do in a virtual environment and with online content delivery, if, if at all possible. So we did, we came up with uh, a plan to engage K through eight uh, students in a um, two hour daily um, STEM camp via from their home. And what we did was we packaged uh, uh, kit of parts and we sent those to the kids of their parents, stopped by our STEM gym and got these activity kits and we sent them home. And so our initial thoughts were to, hey, we're just going to set up a web camera and just have a, you know, have a one of our lead learners uh, lead the whole uh, initiative from a webcam via Zoom. But then that's when uh, Jill mentioned that we had this uh, equipment and to maybe let's test this thing out. So we did, and we set up a studio, and it, the results have been better than expected. As so much that we're going to continue with our studio uh, year-round offering online content. And so our configuration, Chelsea, if you want to, go ahead and uh, advance the slide. So this was our configuration uh, that was set up in the studio. And, and basically, we had, we had monitors. What I can appreciate is the simplicity of uh, setting it up. So we had our interns who were delivering much of the uh, content on a daily basis. And so they were able to easily... Uh, uh, cycle in and out from um, the different uh, different themes, different activities. They could do an overhead view with the camera, uh, switching camera positions, uh, and then also showing um, showing some of our guests. We had Miss America come on to our um, uh, into our online camps for engineering camp that week, and so she did her she performed her experiment with uh, elephant toothpaste. So we were able to cycle her in and out with uh, our switching capabilities inside the studio. And again, a really simplistic um, uh, format that even as myself, I'm sitting here thinking about how the kids are going to get content delivery in the fall if we don't go back to school. And so I think this is the timing for all of this happened for a reason. And so I'm really excited to know that we've uh, we've joined in with, uh, all you all you good guys and cool cats that are doing all this cool stuff and helping us to uh, be able to assemble such a really cool platform in order to uh, deliver content to a lot of kids that we think are going to, and this is, I think this is here to stay. So it's given us a chance to really uh, work out some of the kinks and some identify some of the problems. So we're really happy to have participated in this beta test. And that's all I have, uh, unless somebody has some questions for me from Streamworks. The silence is, <laughs> is uh, deafening. I can't hear anything. <laughs> well, that sounds sounds good and great uh, to be able to see the the equipment in action here. I love the picture on the the bottom. I've got three little girls, and they are my helpers when when I'm uh, getting stuff set up and doing camps. And they participate in the Vex Robotics. Always great to to see that type of interaction. Just getting them involved early in this type of stuff. So. Appreciate that, Dennis, Absolutely. with uh, giving the, the overview of getting the Streamworks lab set up and really practical application of this equipment, testimonial to how easy that is from a instructor perspective to implement this equipment that, that the team here has been um, outlining over the last couple of months, and Andrew's really been driving, driving forward, so thank you, Dennis. You're very welcome, and thank you guys. We appreciate it very much. So, so this is this is Matt. I I am back on the phone. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. We've got you, Matt. And, and so, sorry, I have no idea what happened. It kicked me out, and it won't let me back in. So uh, I had to call him by the phone. I have no idea what happened. Um, 
But if anyway, if if you can go back to that first slide of mine, I can I can continue. Yep, and we're on it right now, Matt. Okay. Um, so thanks everyone. So essentially, as we moved into the online format, uh, we decided to set up most of our presentations for asynchronous delivery. A few presentations were delivered synchronously by the instructor in Zoom, but most were done asynchronously. And so each page of the presentation has an audio link at the top left corner. So this is what the presenter would say if they were standing in front of the classroom giving the presentation in, in person. And we added individual audio files to each slide rather than record one long continuous voiceover for the same reason that we use Google Slides in the first place. So that in case a change is needed, uh, we wanna edit something on that slide, we just need to re-record the audio for that one slide and not the entire presentation. And doing it this way, doing it e asynchronously was nice because each participant could view the presentation at their own chosen time uh, without the need of an instructor present. So I added a little link to an online voice recorder and that was an easy option. And that, that um, website doesn't require you to download a program to your computer or to sign up with a login ID and password. Essentially, you just click on the link, go there, record the material, and save it to an MP3 file on your computer, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So it's a really nice, nice program. Um, very simple, not real complex, but you know, it was, it was easy to use. The other aspect of an in-person delivery, of course, is the Q&A session on each topic. So, of course, when we're standing in front of the classroom, people ask, raise their hands and ask questions, or at the end, ask questions. But for the asynchronous delivery, Canvas allows a discussion board to be associated with each presentation. So participants could post the questions and instructors could answer them via the discussion board in Canvas or during a live Zoom Q&A session. So Canvas also allowed us to create assignments. Um, since the instructors could not walk around the room to assess where people were in the build of their uh, ROV, their underwater robot, may use assignments for various check-in points during the building of the ROVs. Every so often during the build, uh, participants would turn in a video or a photo of their progress, allowing the instructors to assess where they were in the build process. And the nice thing about Canvas is the videos, the photos, or other information can be, direct, can be uh, uploaded directly to Canvas. And then with their grading system, it's really easy to go through those and grade each assignment. So please move to the next slide. <clears throat> okay, so instructional videos were created for many of the asynchronous presentations and example videos of the assessment steps were created as well. So this was actually done uh, with an iPad using iMovie. And after the initial unfamiliarity of a Mac product by an Android user like myself, and I will admit a few curse words here and there, it was actually really easy to shoot movies on, on the iPad. Uh, iMovie is very intuitive and easy to use, and basic post-production, such as cutting unwanted sections, splicing in other video clips, adding title and credit slides, and seamlessly linking the various cuts is actually quite easy to do with the iPad in iMovie. The ATM Mini, which Andrew was talking about, um, ours did arrive, but it didn't arrive until very late in the process. So we at Mate, we didn't have time to try it out and feel comfortable using it, but I can see it helping us to integrate everything in the future. Uh, the lights and tripod helped out quite a bit to improve the quality of the videos we shot, so those were great. And then all of the videos we shot were uploaded and stored on Vimeo. Uh, Mate, has a, Mate has had a Vimeo subscription for years, so it was easier to upload and store them on Vimeo than embed them directly into the Google Slides or to keep them on Google and link to them there. That has also helped us to avoid some of the challenges we have seen when it comes to videos embedded in slide presentations. So the blue link is a short assessment video um, we wanted the participants to load videos or pictures of their build. This is an example I shot uh, of one stage of building. 
uh, the completion of soldering the backplane board, which is one of our components. If someone wants to see see those video, that video, we'll check it out later. So anyway, uh, please move to the next slide. Okay, um, so we used Zoom for our workshop. Some of the nice features we used were the capability to switch camera views. In this case, it was switching from the webcam showing the instructor's face to a document camera that could, that could be positioned over the example equipment. So we saw with the ATM Mini, you can switch back and forth. There are more limited capabilities in Zoom. So in Zoom, and I found out uh, in, in Microsoft Teams, this is a simple button click to switch between your cameras, um, and you could look down at, at things. And what we found is being able to switch to a document camera looking down was invaluable for troubleshooting. Instructors could show their document camera and view, and for example, show like where to place the multimeter in the system to get readings. And what we also found was a side effect was that the instructors uh, had to teach troubleshooting more effectively. We couldn't just, in the past, when we did in-person workshops and someone had problems, we'd usually sit down, go through the troubleshooting with them, but it was really us doing the work and the troubleshooting. But through Zoom and through um, the online format, we actually had to teach them how to troubleshooting, and they had to do it all themselves with us as advisors. So it was, it was really, um, really helped us out to improve our troubleshooting. Um, and I'll say that that picture up in the uh, top right is a screenshot of the little document camera we had looking down at at our at our Triggerfish system. So Zoom uh, also has a whiteboard where you can write on and thing and um, and post things. But more often we linked into Jamboard, which is a Google add-on, and we found that Jamboard was great for group sharing. Um, a few of our presentations that require feedback from the participants are ideal for Jamboard. So when we ask for everyone to share in Jamboard, they can just create a post-it note, write the feedback or whatever they want on that note and post it onto the board. So the example shown, the, the photo on the bottom, is an example of feedback on how participants might want to use their underwater robot to do science um, out in the field around them. And it's just a really good way to engage and get feedback from everyone simultaneously. So instead of having to call on people, listen to their response, call on someone else, everyone posts their response um, all at once to Jamboard. And then the instructor can go through and elaborate on, on those posts that, that they would like to elaborate on. So uh, also during our workshop, and I think that Vince found this out during his geotech conference, that it was also nice to have two computers or multiple computers with multiple Zoom accounts active. So our workshop featured two working groups, each building uh, a different level of ROV. And so instead of Zoom breakout rooms, which only the host can open and close and invite people into, we just set up two different Zoom meetings and one for each working group. And the instructors with, uh, with multiple computers could monitor both rooms at once with different Zoom accounts. I'll admit it took some juggling with the volume and the mute button to make sure one was off when I was talking on the other one, but overall it worked really well to monitor the two different groups. So in general, in conclusion, uh, the online workshop worked out really well for us. There were plenty of lessons learned and things to improve on. For example, one was that we needed another, essentially a pre-meeting a week or so before the workshop started just to go over the agenda, remind people of how each day would be set up, make sure they had all the necessary materials, remind them that they had nightly homework of reviewing the asynchronous presentations. We found that once they got building their underwater robot, the reviewing of the presentations every night sort of went out the window. So we had done a initial Zoom meeting with everyone and gone over all this six weeks prior and covered much of this, but something a week or a couple days before would have been beneficial to refresh uh, everyone's mind. But overall, it went well. The video production equipment played a big part in allowing us to upgrade our presentations to what we needed to deliver this information in the online asynchronous format. Um, and by continuing to improve our online delivery, make can hopefully reach a lot more people in the future with less time involved from instructors. Eventually, 
I would like to see most of our workshops done fully asynchronously with only a few Zoom meeting office hours every week to help the participants with any questions or concerns they have. Uh, so that's it. That's my report on how we used our technology for our professional development workshop. Does anyone have any questions? Well, thank you very much, Matt, for that uh, that overview of again practical application putting this equipment in into use. And sounds like that was a good experience based on the equipment that we've been able to identify for the team here and and distribute out to the NCAP partners. I guess at this point, open it up for questions. I know we've got five minutes to the top of the hour, so open it up to questions for Andrew, Dennis, or Matt. Um, anything that the team has here? Andrew, could you talk about the difference between the pro model and the basic model, the ATEM? So I um, don't know all of the differences between the two different models, um, but uh, I guess Given the uh, functionality of of the the regular mini, uh, I don't necessarily see the advantages of going to the pro, but um, I guess I'd have to have one in my hands to experiment with. So maybe Zach and I can compare. We've got a couple of them here at Northland. And I also wanted to share back with the audience that uh, this PowerPoint and all of the hardware that we're using um, is going to be available. This is going to be put into, um, what did you guys decide for sharing of this information? Zach? I believe it's going to be out on Dropbox. Yeah, we'll get so a link to the, all the resources. Again, Andrew had kind of put together a couple more PowerPoint slides that weren't necessarily a part of the presentation today, but really helped capture that information as well as kind of the shopping cart list so you can see all the different tools and equipment that have been identified by the team uh, for this project. So we'll make sure to get that out to everyone. And then we're we're also gonna try to get a active discussion board um, or living document so we can get feedback to it. We've got a lot of the team employing these tools out in the field for the, the competitions, camps workshops and in the classroom. So we'll have that information coming to this whole group and more uh, following this this uh, webinar. I know you spoke to it, Andrew, about the lead times. Uh, lead time on the ATM, I don't know if that's changed, but what was your experience uh, trying to get this equipment? I know you briefly addressed yeah, it. It was about six weeks lead time. And like I said, it's a, it's a new product. Um, and the price point and the functionality of this product are make it very, very desirable. So uh, prior to something like this, other options were probably in the two to uh, $4,000 to get a video switching device that would have similar functionality. So when this can come in at $300 for the regular mini or about $600 for the pro, and I guess one of the advantages of the Pro is that it has uh, uh, its own recording device. So maybe the video assist wouldn't necessarily be needed, but at any rate, um, yeah, they're, they're probably in that six weeks at least if you ordered one today. No, yeah, okay. I know the Pro also allows you to switch between the cameras. So I could switch to, let's say, camera one and see a preview before I actually split it to one. If that makes sense? Yep. Which and kind of with nice. the control software, you have that option as well uh, to change it. So you can do a preview before you actually switch it over. Other questions for the team? Overall setup time. How long did that take you to set up the lab at East Grand Forks campus? Um, 
So I, I guess if I had to pull this stuff all out of the box and get it set up now that I've done it once, <laughs> it wouldn't be near as long, probably an hour to get it all set up. And ideally what I could see a situation where this is uh, set up permanently and maybe it may travel from one classroom to another and as, as different college faculty take advantage of it. But I like that it is portable and that um, it may not take, you know, but an hour or so to get it set up and then you're recording. So that's not bad. No, not at all. I, I think that's uh, pretty great. And I know there's been a lot of interest across campus for being able to do that on site in the different lab environments, as well as kind of the current situation, being able to check out one of these kits and do that from a home lab. So I think that's going to be a really great resource across the campus. And I know the team here has already been uh, digging in across the different NCAP partners um, throughout the country. So that's great. Yep. And then during the setup uh, this last time, I realized that a few cables should be a little bit longer. So those have been updated to the, uh, the wish list shopping cart. And then the addition of this uh, kind of this this craft or you know a uh, a grid pattern um, to have that there that b h also sells those so um, i added one of those to the shopping cart along with a power strip because there's a lot of stuff that's got to get plugged in <laughs> i know at some point um zach and andrew maybe we could have a session where we get our atm mini pros together and kind of walk through it and, and learn together that would be really helpful and i would be appreciated over on this side yeah, let's do it. Just uh, fire up a Zoom meeting and we can walk through it. Yeah, because there's 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 definitely a lot. I, I do see the record button on the ATM Mini Pro, but you definitely need that, as we talked about the other day, that output to see what the heck is actually going on in there, which is, um, yeah, another, another monitor or screen. Well, that sounds good. We'll make that a uh, the item on the weekly agenda to talk about that and get a group pulled together for those who have the equipment right now and are working on development. I know we're, we're just past the top of the hour right now, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up pending, pending any other thoughts from the group here. Uh, but look for that follow-up. We'll get the resources posted, get a link sent out to the team. Um, so you've got access to the presentation, the different video links that, that uh, the presenters had in there, and then that shopping cart list, you can actually see the equipment and what this kit is that the team's been able to put together. So. Yeah, thanks, John. And I know Mike Passavento is on the line, and I'm going to encourage him to join that little walkthrough with the group. I'm hopeful he'll, he'll be able. He's got a lot of great experience with this equipment, and he's been a real asset to us. Thanks, Jill. Sounds good. Well, with Thanks, that, everyone. thank you very much for presenting and sharing all the great info. I know it's been a lot of research looking into the best tools and trying to make this a user-friendly kit, and I think the team's put together some pretty, uh, pretty great resources here that are going to get a lot of utilization across campuses. So thank you very much, Andrew, Matt, and Dennis for presenting today. We'll be talking soon. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you, for Thank you all. Thanks.